are some intangibles that those projections failed to take into consideration. The crowd was going crazy. There's not much in life that's better than that. You're listening to Garlic Fries and Baseball Guys on the 95.7 The Game Podcast Network. Hello there. Welcome back to the Garlic Fries and Baseball Guys Podcast. Sam Lubman here, as always, with Joe the Butcher Boy Shasky for episode 74. 74, Shasky, that's the number of times Juan Soto has gone deep against the Giants this year, or, or at least that's just what it feels like. He's got a 1476 OPS against the Giants this year, which is by far his highest first any team he has faced at least 30 times this year. His six home runs are the most first any team this year. Uh, he's got nine walks drawn. Only the Nationals have walked him more. Juan Soto has absolutely owned the Giants this year, and he continued to do it again this weekend as the Giants took three of as the Padres took three of four from the Giants down in San Diego. And uh, man, just when you thought the Padres season was lost, the the Giants come to town and get them back on track. Oh my goodness! I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you, dude. Watching Juan Soto go opposite field, off the wall, over the fence. It's just, the guy's got such a beautiful swing. Woulda, coulda, shoulda, man. Yeah, that's uh, the Ted Williams comps make a little bit more sense when he plays against the Giants, right? (laughs) Well, here's the thing, though. He's got a 348 BABIP uh, against the Giants so far, which means he's definitely due for some regression at some point this year. So don't worry, Giants fans. He's going to come back down to earth at some point. But it's just frustrating because, yeah, every time Juan Soto sees the Giants uniform, he just he goes into full on hitter mode, and uh, you really wish that the Giants hitters would go on to full on hitter mode when they saw the Giants uniform, but it's just not happening. And then I want to kind of start off with there is just the, the Giants offense is just it's hitting levels of bleakness that we really haven't seen since 2018. Shasky, like it's it's so bad. Like here are the the, the second half numbers that the Giants had in 2018. They hit 219, 272 uh, on base with a 326 slugging. That's good for a 598 OPS, which is that's pretty bad. That's the second half of 2018. So far in the second half of this year, the Giants are hitting 214 with a 291 on base, a 335 uh, slugging, which is good for a 625 OPS and 39 home runs. So slightly better power numbers, but these are still 2018 numbers that we're seeing the Giants put up here in the year. Let me check my notes. Uh, 2023. They haven't had a 30 home run guy in so long since Bonds. It, it's, yeah. I mean, Sam, I'm, I'm, I'm lost on the adjective to describe this team. Like, Let's I just go with bad. Why complicate it? <laughs> well, let me ask you a simple equation. Like, who do you expect to be hitting in this lineup? I mean, if I had to be like, you know, the line I use is, oh, here comes the thump. Uh, basically, I, don't, I guess if I see Patrick Bailey do up next inning, I'm like, all right, He's all right. Historically mediocre hitter in the minor leagues. Like I don't know. That's how bad things are. We're looking at a guy like Patrick Bailey, who it has felt like found money at times exactly. this year in terms of just what he is doing offensively. Defensively, I don't think he's surprising anybody. Oh. Um, he seems like a much smarter hitter, a much more uh, polished hitter at the plate that I think we were anticipating. I, I, I'm not saying he's going to you know hit like Joe Maurer or Buster Posey ever did, but I mean, I'm not like thinking, oh, well, this is a total mirage with Patrick Bailey. But Patrick Bailey is also not a guy where it's just like, if you're looking at a lineup and you're thinking, all right, Patrick Bailey's coming up next. Here's the thump. That's not a very good lineup. That's no disrespect to Patrick Bailey. He's been, had a great year. He's, a, I think, a great part of this Giants future. But I think it goes to what you're saying, Shasky, is just this is where they, this is how dismal things are at right now with this Giants lineup. So you're asking a rookie who's never hit even near 300 in his any of his full seasons in minor leagues to carry this team offensively at the big league level. Like, I, and I'm not ripping you. I'm saying, like, that's, that's basically where we're right. at. I, I mean, mean it, it would seem a lot crazy if we hadn't already done that before with Buster Posey, but I I want to stay away from Buster Posey comp. So, yeah, continue. But even that year, like 2010, yes, Buster Posey was awesome. They had Pat Burrell. They had Andres mm-hmm. Torres. Um, you know, they had Juan Uribe. They had Aubrey Huff, all having career years. Yeah. Career years, not good years, career years. And they had an elite pitching staff, right? Yeah, none of those things qualify right no, now. No, Giants don't have any of those things. They got the catcher. They have literally nothing else, though, a part of this team. I want to ask you. So, so, what I really want to get into here is you. You brought something up on the show today. Uh, we're recording this on, by the way, on Tuesday, September fifth. Uh, most of you will probably be listening to this episode on Wednesday, September sixth, because that's when I'll be releasing it. Um, but you said something on the show this morning. Uh, you said it's this feels like the end, not like the end of the season, but like it feels like the like we're seeing the last days of this Farhan Zaidi Gabe Kapler regime. I kind of want to dive into that because it, it does kind of feel like 
there, there doesn't feel like a run it back feel or anything like that going around this team right now. I want to kind of want pick you on pick your brain a little bit more on that. When you say this feels like the end, kind of kind of just describe that for me. What yeah. is this end feeling feeling like for you? Well, first of all, I'm seeing a manager who it just feels like to me he's got a little fire under his butt in terms of pressure. It feels mm-hmm. like the, the front office came down and was like, "Yeah, you guys better make the playoffs or else." That that's the feeling I get. And when I mean my front office, I mean Larry Barron ownership. Yeah. Uh, and then I look at the lineups they're trotting out, like Dijon at shortstop. Yeah. Really? Like, we're, we're playing Yastrzemski in right field and Slater in center field and Jock in left field. Why? Like, mm-hmm. what's the point of having Ramos and Matos do anything at AAA? Like, what could either of those guys do at AAA that's going to help them be better big leaguers at this point in their careers? I agree. No, okay. I mean – and then yeah. I look at like, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna keep trotting out Wilmer Flores every single day. And God bless Wilmer; he's tried his best. He's got twenty home mm-hmm. runs. He's had a great year. But like, really, real, like really, like JD Davis is just gonna play third base until what? He bats two hundred five. Like he has mm-hmm. precipitously fallen off a map. Why are I we know. Tristan yeah. Beck two days after he just pitched? Like. There's so many questions that I'm having with this team. And it just feels like to me they've thrown up the white flag. And I get the feeling that Farhan and Gabe are now trying to do PR damage in terms of winning as many games as they can so that when they get thrown to the curb, they can be like, see, we won 84 games with that Giants team at the end. Because yeah. at the end, people are just going to look at the box score. No, I feel like that's kind of where it's at too. I, normally I would fight you on this, but yeah, it feels like this, this team is kind of waving the white flag. It feels like they're going through the motions. It felt like that last weekend. You thought maybe it was safe when Tyro Estrada gives a little speech to try to rally guys. Hey, we can play better. And then a week later, it's, you know, Mike Yastrzemski and Wilmer Flores are having meetings in the office with Gabe Kapler after games because of how bad things are. Yeah, it does feel like they're just, they're going through the motions, playing out the string and seeing what they could do to enhance the resume. I would love to see, don't wrong. I would love to see the Giants make the playoffs. I absolutely would. I want it more than anything. So I think making the playoffs is, is a good thing. But at the same time, like if this team makes the playoffs, what is that? What is that they, in the future? It's almost like, like if, if, you're, if you're a parent and you have a kid that won't eat their vegetables, you're not going to give them dessert. The no. Giants making the playoffs with this roster playing baseball this way, even if it's like that fifth or sixth wild card spot. That feels like giving your kid uh, ice cream for dessert, even though they didn't eat their vegetables for dinner. Like you're rewarding bad behavior. And the last thing I want to see is a season where the Giants look around. It's like, well, heck, we won 85 games playing this way and made the playoffs. Clearly, we're doing something right. No, you're not doing anything right. I'm throwing my hat off because, no, you're not doing anything right. Like, that's where we're at right now. I just, I, I'm not rooting against this team, but like, come on, this team needs to seriously have a wake up and smell the coffee moment and understand what we're doing right now just isn't working. What is working? I honestly do not know. The only thing I could say is working is again, you go back to Patrick Bailey, Camille Duvall, I think does well. And he comes in Logan Webb. I mean, you're, you're looking at individual guys and like no actual strategy is working. And it's at a point where it's just like, there really is no defending it. And that's, I want to play some that, that Dave Fleming said on the show this morning that I thought really captured the mood around how we feel about this team right now. There's no defending the results. There isn't like there. And if, if at the end of this year, there aren't massive questions about why that is and frankly changes to what they're doing, then you will be perfectly within your right to, ask some tough questions and be unhappy about it because you can't have a year like this offensively and not rethink what you're doing because it's it just nothing has worked. There's no defending the results. There isn't like there. It, and if, if at the end of this year, there are. Well, that's enough. I started replay there, but no, it, I think Fleming has said it best that you cannot defend what's happened this year. There's been some pluses here and there that you can be like, Oh, I feel good about that. But overall, like if my original goal this year is I need to feel better about this team at the end of the year than the beginning, right now the giants are failing that goal. Cause I just do not feel better. And so I guess, you know, Fleming mentioned, you know, you have to ask some real difficult questions this off season. Shasky let's, so let's assume that one of those tough questions is not should Farhan come back. Let's just pretend that that answer is yes for okay. this conversation. I, what else is what else do you really ask yourself? It is any of this salvageable at this point? Like, does this re, does 
does it feel like this regime can maybe turn the ship around and salvage this? Or are we just counting down the days till the notification pops up? Giants have dismissed Farhan and Kapler. I, I just have a feeling that they've lost their own fan base. I have mm-hmm. never seen a fan base reject a mediocre brand of sports like this. It's funny, like when the Niners had Chip Kelly or Jim Tom Sula, we clearly rejected that as a fan base, mm-hmm. right? But imagine if they had went like seven and nine, because that's what it feels like with the Giants. They're like eight and eight, seven and nine. That would be the equivalent. Like yeah. it's almost it's almost like the end of the Singletary era, where it was like, we're just we're exhausted. We're just give we're us something better, yeah. Mediocre. No, I think that's a good way. I think losing the fan base is a good way to look at it because at this point, yeah, I really feel like the Giants have come out and win another 100 games next year and everyone's yes. like, okay, cool. You, we, we've seen this one already. Like, we already know what you're going to do. You're going to say that you're smart. You're going to do absolutely nothing to fix it and then we're going to be right back where we are again. Exactly. And now we're talking about, oh, they're going to go and spend money on Cody Bellinger this year. It's like you said you're going to spend money last year. Like, we're not, we're, fans are sick and tired of falling for the banana in this tailpipe yes. right here. And really, yeah, Bay Area fans, I think you have a very good reason to be upset about this. The Bay Area sports history is full of, you know, I mean, let me backtrack here really quick. Like you, you always say you never want to be the guy who follows the guy. The Bay Area though has a pretty good tradition of guys following guys, whether it's Flores following up Madden with the Raiders from the seventies into the eighties uh, with the Niners, you had Bill Walsh led to George Seifert and then Steve Mariucci who both found success in their own special way. Um, you know, even, you know, with, uh, with, with the sharks, you had Tom McClellan didn't win anything, but he had probably the most successful era in sharks history feeds into Pete DeBoer, who then takes him to a Stanley cup. It, it, even the A's with Tony La Russa going into art, Howe had their fair share of success for the most part, you know, teams have been able to, you know, follow up a successful coach with another coach to bring success. Now, of course, I didn't mention the Warriors there because whoever follows up Steve Kerr is going to have one of the worst tasks ever. You thought following up Bochi was bad, but yeah, (laughs) for the most part though, the giants have somehow become the first barrier team to not be able to follow up a legendary coach with another good coach. And that right there is because like, yeah, you have every right to be frustrated with how the giants have handled the post Bochi years. And I almost kind of wonder Shasky, was it always just, just doomed to be like this? coming out of such an amazing run with Bochy and Sabian, was there just no way they could possibly live up to it? And we were, it was just kind of always destined to end up into the situation or is that kind of being maybe too overdramatic about it? Um, I don't know. I don't really know what to expect here. Like when it comes to that, like, yes, were were they ever going to replicate, you know, three and five years? No, probably not. But like, I thought it would be better than this. And I think yeah. the thing that, that's the most frustrating is that they've tried to sell me on it is better than you think it is. And my brain is saying, no, it's not. And yeah. my heart is saying, no, it's not. And what you're doing is trotting out a bunch of journeymen that I just don't care about. Yeah. Like, I feel like 2021, you'd be like, it's better than, think, than you think it is. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm definitely seeing that. 2022, it's like, there was a glitch in the system. Don't worry. Yeah. It's a one-off. But what this year has basically done is say, like, no, 2021 might have been the one-off. And last year might be more par for the course because again, it's just, it feels exactly like 2022 or exactly like 2018. And again, I bring it back to 2018 because that second half of 2018 punctuated by one of the worst Septembers ever. Again, like that's what led to the firing of, of Sabian and Evans and the giants are already putting up second half of 2021, 2018 numbers. Sorry. And there's still a month of this season left. So they could easily make these numbers look way, way worse than they are right now. Maybe they could make it better, obviously. I mean, A.J. Pollock's gone, so anything is possible. But, uh, yeah, it just you, – you put up a poll the other day. Do the Giants feel like they're better, worse, or in the same spot as they were in 2018? I voted same spot. Like, this feels like exact, like we're back to start again. You know, we've, we've circled the board. We're back at go, but we're not collecting 200. And, like, this is not what Farhan was brought here for. We said it. Farhan was supposed to be a new era – And basically he's got us right back to start. And it's like, well, you know what? Sure. The farm system's a little bit better now than it was in 2018, but that just makes the job more attractive for whoever we replace Farhan with at this point. I mean, it's just, it's so sad how far they've fallen, isn't it? Yeah. I I, I expected so much more and I just, I don't know, man. I, I almost feel exhausted by the whole thing because I do see some level of, getting better at the minor league level, 
But it's like, stick with those guys. Like, what are it's, you afraid of? But it's like, it's marginal. Like, you're seeing, it's like, it's like the Dodgers are going out and like, they're adding, you know, like $5,000, they're making like $5,000 a month. And you're thinking you're making it big, making, you know, $50 a month. It's just, it, the, the, the incremental increases in in performance just aren't enough to keep mm -hmm. up with the teams that they need to be competing with so 